All right, day two, 6.3a. Um, there are five review questions. Once again, they should be quick. Please pause your video and do them. It's important that you keep up with these things. Pause the video. All right, here we go. Um, write the point uh, three other ways. So 4, negative 300, negative 4, 240, or negative 4, negative 120. What is the origin called in a polar plane? It's called the pole. Name one profession that would require the knowledge of polar coordinates. There are many of aviation, computer graphics, animation, military, etc. Uh, how many triangles if A is 7, B is 7, and C is 14? There would be no triangles. And the last one... Uh, how many triangles if A is 56 degrees, C is 50, 89 degrees, and, and length B is 19? There would be two triangles possible, um, and that is because the opposite is greater than the height, but it is less than the adjacent, so you have two possibles. All right, let's move on here. Talking about today, the continuation of polar coordinates in terms of conversions. So our goal today is to be converting polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar coordinates. They want us to change each point in polar form to rectangular form. Yesterday, we talked about this right at the end of our lesson, that x is really r cosine theta, and y is really r sine theta. So for this one, Let's take a look at this first one. Now, r in this case, r is going to be 6, and this is our theta, which is going to be pi over 4. So x is going to equal 6 cosine, because that's what we're talking about, our theta measure, which is pi over 4. That means what is cosine at pi over 4? Well, cosine at pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So our x value here is going to be 3 root 2. That's the first one. The second one, y is equal to 6. This is going to be sine of pi over 4. Well, that's going to be the same because when you're at pi over 4s of some sort, your x's and y's are always the same, which means your coordinates are going to be the same. That would be your y. So your answer is going to be 3 root 2 over uh, comma 3 root 2. And that makes sense. Like I was saying, x and y have to be the same at a 45 degree angle of some sort. Let's look at the next one. Our r here is uh, negative 14, and our theta is negative pi over 6. So the first one, x is equal to, this is negative 14 cosine of negative pi over 6. Now, two ways of kind of approaching this. First of all, cosine. Cosine is considered um, an even function, and when we do this, what an even function is meaning is that if I have cosine at pi over 6, so let's just look at this real quick. Here would be pi over 6. Here would be negative pi over 6. Well, what is cosine at pi over 6? Well, hopefully you guys remember from your uh, unit circle that cosine at pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. What is cosine at negative pi over 6? Well, it is also root 3 over 2. Remember, cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrant. Therefore, it doesn't matter if I use the negative here or not. I can really say that this is cosine of pi over 6. It's an even function. doesn't really matter when you plug it in your calculator. If you were to do that, you would see it. But um, in terms of this, we should have a negative answer here. And the negative answer to this, when we actually do the math, so we're going to have uh, negative 14 cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So this is 7 root uh, 3, and it is negative. That's our first one. Now, y, on the other hand, if we think about y as a sine value, 
Well, sine at negative pi over 6, y is going to be a negative answer. In the first quadrant, if I say pi over 6, it's positive. So because sine is positive in the first and second quadrants, I'm going to have to deal with this a little bit differently. It's considered an odd function. And that means if I take the negative out, I'm going to have to apply it to the first negative. So this is really saying 14 sine of pi over 6. Now that means 14 sine pi over 6 is really 1 half for sine. That makes this, sorry, I don't mean to write it like that. It means one half here, so that makes it seven. So the answer to this one is going to be negative seven root three and seven for my final. Now, let's think about this for a minute. If we have a polar coordinate graph and we're at negative pi over six and then we say negative 14, where does that put us? Well, it should put us in the second quadrant. Now, is this point in the second quadrant? Well, cosine or x is negative, y is positive. Yes, we're in the second quadrant. We're right where we're supposed to be. That is something that you want to think about as you do these. The first one, well, the first one was in the first quadrant. And my answer, when I'm done, is in the first quadrant because they're both positive. This one should have ended up in the second quadrant. That should be something that you check. Which quadrant are you in as you go through these? It's kind of important to know which one you're in so that you actually know where your answer is going to lie. This one says 0 and pi over 3. Well, here's pi over 3. But if we have 0 radius, that puts us right here. Well, where are we? We're at the origin, 0, 0. That's the rectangular coordinate for this one. We don't need to do any more of the work than that because there's nothing else to do. It told us exactly where we were. The same thing is going to apply if we are on any of the quadrantals here. If we're at pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 or pi or 0, then we're just going to end up with a number for our y value or our x value, and y would be 0, one or the other. And we'll see those as we go forward. How about this next one? It's saying our radius is 4 and 1.2 is our... Um, this is our radian measure. Remember, they don't have to be in terms of pi necessarily or a degree measure. So here, where are we? Well, 1.2. If you consider that this pi over 2 line is really 1.57, well, then 1 1.2 puts us in the first quadrant. And now it's just a question of what we were doing. So x is equal to, this is going to be, uh, 4 cosine of 1.2. Obviously, we're going to need a calculator to actually do this one. Um, and we are going to get an approximate answer here. So, bringing up our calculator, we have 4, sorry, we have 4 uh, cosine of 1.2. We get 3.2. 9, 9. Now, that seems to be a little weird. I go back in here and I realize that we are in radians. Or, I mean, in degrees. So I got to make sure that we're in radians when we do this because this thing was in radians. And when I do this one, it's going to give me 1.45. So it's approximately 1.45. Now, for our y value, this is going to be 4. This is going to be sine at 1.2. So approximately, what are we looking at? Well, this would be 4 sine 1.2. This is 3.73. So our answer to this one, approximately 1.45 to 3.73. Rectangular-wise, that puts us in the first quadrant. That makes sense. So let's look at the next one. 22 at 67 degrees. So x is equal to 22. Oh, wait. First of all, cosine, or, uh, angle measure 67 degrees. 
we should recognize that as being in quadrant one. So 24 cosine 67 degrees, that's gonna give me an answer, and y should be 22 uh, sine of 67 degrees, that will also give me an answer. So bring up my calculator again. We have 22. Uh, cosine 67, I'm still in radian or uh, degree measure here. I just realized that, so I better go back to here and make sure I go back to degrees. Back out here, repaste. This is 8.59, so 8.60, 8.60. And then the second one. Well, that one's going to be 22 sine of 67. That's 20.25. 20 20.25. So, our answer? Well, it is approximately 8.60 and 20.25. Is this in the first degree, or in the first quadrant? Well, it should be because... That's where um, we have two positive answers here, one for x, one for y, so that should be the case. How about example number six? So we have a negative 2.3, and we have a negative 178 degrees. So negative 178 degrees, if we think about it, would put us very close right here at negative 178. That's in that one. It's saying it's got a negative. So this one should give me an answer. Whoops, I don't want to be there. Should give me an answer somewhere on this line. That puts me in the first quadrant again. Important that you know where you are. So cosine. This one, sorry, not cosine. X is equal to negative 2.3 cosine 178 and it's negative, negative 178 degrees. Now, if I think about this, cosine being an even function, that negative shouldn't make any difference. And if I start right here and I go this way, 178 degrees, well, cosine's still negative. So it doesn't change which way I go here. Putting this one in your calculator, though, you should get the same answer regardless. So approximately there y is equal to negative 2.3, and we're talking sine of a negative 178. Well, sine at this value right here, sine is going to be negative at 100, negative 178 degrees. But if I were to try to go from here around, it's positive in the second quadrant. So if I were to take the negative out of this one, I would have to apply it to the front of this one. But once again, your calculator will do the work for you. You don't necessarily need to see that part. So the first one says negative 2.3. Um, these are in degrees still, so cosine uh, negative 178. Enter. Now I'm going to do this just so we understand that I should get the same answer even if I use the positive version here. So. I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to say 178 this time. And we see we get the same answer here, 2.30. So it's approximately 2.30 for the cosine value. And if I do the same thing, negative 2.3 sine of negative 178, I get this answer. And if I do negative 2.3 sine of a positive 178. Well, now I should get the same answer, and it should be positive. Here it's saying negative, so why? Why would that be the case? Well, in this one, we ended up with this negative answer right here. We'd have to distribute here. So this is where this kind of comes into play. We have to think about this, because if I take the negative out of here, I have to apply it to this because I know I'm in the first quadrant. There's no doubt I'm in the first quadrant. But if I don't apply it like I did here on the calculator, that's going to be an issue. That's going to tell me then, because here I didn't do that. I took it out of here, but I left it out front. So hopefully you guys see that, and that makes sense here. 
that if I had taken the negative out of the middle, I can't just leave it out. I have to actually apply it. Either way, my answer is going to be uh, 0 0.08. So here's my coordinates. They are approximately at 2.30 and 0 0.08. Am I in the first quadrant? Yes. All right, hopefully we see how that works in terms of converting from polar to rectangular. Now, to convert from rectangular to polar, it's a little bit different. So let's take a look at it, changing from those. We talked about this the other day, that when you change from rectangular to polar, uh, two things happen. First of all, we're dealing with a circle. So we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And since we're talking about tangents and we're talking about xy's, we know that tangent theta has to be y over x. That's what we have to use to incorporate all of them. And remember, if we're given a rectangular coordinate, we're given an x and a y. So we can only do math based on the x and the y. Here, r is going to be the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared. And it could also be the negative square root of x squared plus y squared. But we're going to have to add, um, actually, I don't know if I want to say it like that. I think r can just be this. And I think um, here is what's missing is we should have a theta right here. And this should be the inverse tangent of y over x. But we need to add pi when the point falls in the second or third quadrant. Why is that? Well, remember, we're talking about an inverse tangent, and we are locked in with inverse tangent in the first and fourth quadrants. So if the point is in two or three, we're going to have to add to get out of there. Also, keep in mind, when you state your answer, we don't really want to state our answer in terms of negatives. You may see them as negatives, but most of the time, your angle measure will be positive when you do these things. And a lot of the times... Um, when you're talking about doing these as well, your radius comes out to be a positive. So that's really kind of our goal is that the radius will be positive and the uh, angle measure is positive. just keeps everything kind of similar. But remember, we already talked about it. We can change them whenever we want to. So let's take a look here. Starting with the first one. 2-2. Um, two, two. First thing to check, where are you? Well, 2, 2, we're in the first quadrant. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to convert. So we need an r value. Well, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And that's going to be the square root of 4 plus 4, which is 8, um, which then when we reduce it, 2 root 2. So there's my r value. Now theta is going to be tangent. Uh, inverse tangent of 2 over 2. Well, 2 over 2 is really 1. So what's the inverse tangent of 1? Well, that's pi over 4. And remember, we are going to do these in radian measure unless we need to do something different. So unit circle issues, we're going to use radians. Um, if they tell us to do something different, then we will. If it's something where we don't necessarily have a actual value, we're going to use degree measures for our answers. But here, we have 2 root 2 is our r, and pi over 4 is our angle measure. We are in quadrant 1. That is our answer. And remember, we could rewrite these. We could make this negative 2 root 2 and then go around the circle and change our rate or our radian measure to suit those particular ones. But for our answers, that's how we're going to see them. Uh, let's look at this next one. Negative 4 over negative 4. Where are we? Well, x is negative, y is negative. We are in the third quadrant. So r is equal to, this is going to be negative 4 squared plus negative 4 squared. That's going to give us the square root of 16 plus 16, that equals the square root of 32. When we reduce that down, we're going to get 4 root 2. This is our first one. Notice it's positive. 
Secondly, we want to find our theta. So this is going to be the inverse tangent of negative 4 over negative 4, which is really just theta being the inverse tangent of 1. Well, that's pi over 4 again, just like it was in the last problem. However, we are in quadrant 3, which means we need to add pi over 4, or 4 pi over 4 in this case. Hopefully everybody sees that. So what is our answer going to say? Well, it's 4 root 2 and 5 pi over 4. Are we in the third quadrant? Well, hopefully you understand 5 pi over 4. We are in the third quadrant. That is the answer. All right, how about the next one? <clears throat> well, the next one is saying that we have 0, 7. Well, if I think about 0, 7, it's 0x up 7. Here it is right here. So if I want to find r and my theta value, well, r is going to be 7, and my theta value is going to be pi over 2. We don't need to do any more than that to show this one, because in this case, it's on an axis. And when you're on an axis, either x or y is going to be 0. Let's look down here at the next one, number 10. So 4, negative 7. So it's telling me my r value here is going to be the square root of uh, 4 squared plus negative 7 squared. That's going to be the square root of, this is 16 plus 49 which makes this uh, the square root of five, 65. 65 is 5 and 13, both prime numbers, can't reduce it anymore. Now I'm going to go to my theta. My theta here is going to be the inverse tangent of the y value, negative 7, over the x value. Now obviously this one is not on our, on our uh, unit circle anywhere, so we're going to need our calculator. Um, whoops, before I forget, 4, negative 7, where are we? Well, x is positive, y is negative, we are in the fourth quadrant. So when I get an answer here, I'm going to get a negative answer, and it really is the angle measure, but once again, to keep consistency, we are going to state everything in terms of a positive r and a positive theta. So I'm going to find my answer, and, and because I'm going to be in the fourth quadrant, because it's going to give me a fourth quadrant answer, I'm going to add 360. And I'm going to do this in degrees. Um, you should be doing it in degrees. If it doesn't fall somewhere on a perfect thing for our unit circle, then we're going to use degree measures here. And we only use them because my calculator's in degrees. They're just easier to visualize when we come to do these, and they're harder to get an answer when you're just putting them into terms of uh, 1.2 or 3.6 or something like that. So much simpler to do it this way. So we're going to say the inverse tangent of negative 7 divided by 4. Put that in our calculator. We're going to hit Enter. We're going to get negative 60.26. So negative 60.26, this is an approximation. So that is approximately, we're going to, remember, I don't want to leave it as a negative answer, even though, even though you're going to see them sometimes as that. Better to just add 360 to it to get your proper uh, positive answer here. So I'm going to take that number and I'm going to say plus uh, 360. We get 299.7, so 299.7 degrees. So what's our answer here? Well, it's root 65 and 299.7 degrees. That would be our answer. Now the question is, what quadrant are we in? Well, hopefully you should see we're right at 300, and 300 would be in the fourth quadrant. How about the next one? X is negative, Y is negative. So where are we? Well, we would be in the uh, third quadrant when they're both negatives. So it's telling me then that this is a third quadrant problem. R is going to equal this. I'm going to do this a little quicker now. It's 9 plus uh, 16. 
So that's the square root of 25, which makes this r equals 5. And then our theta measure, well, we're going to have inverse tangent of negative 4 over negative 3, which is just positive 4 thirds. So positive 4 thirds, I'm going to put that into my calculator. We're going to go second tangent 4 divided by 3. We get 53.13. So 53.13 degrees. And that's an approximation. And since we know our answer has to be in the third, this is a first quadrant answer. So 53.13 degrees plus uh, 180 degrees. And remember, when you're doing this, um, use the values that you already have in your calculator just to make sure. So plus 180 is 233.13. 233.13. So, um, our answer for this one, 5, comma, this is 233.13 degrees, and that's our answer. Now, the last one, this is one of those ones I said that since it has a 0 as an x or a y, in this case, here's a negative 8, and we have a point right there at negative 8. So what are we looking at? Well, this would be pi, and we have an 8 in terms of our um, distance from the origin. Remember, it's distance here, radius. So it's 8 and pi. No work to do with that one. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys in terms of conversions. Um, we'll talk a little about conversions a little bit more when we move forward. Have a good one. Bye.